Episode 56 BS. April 5, 2023, The Sun Queen Issue. A little boy emigrated from Hungary to the United States with his parents. A scientist recruited the boy's little nuclear family to live in a solar house in Dover, Massachusetts around 1950. The solar house worked for a few years and amazed visitors with the warmth the house contained without burning any fuel. Big solar panels on the roof and across the sunny side of a second floor outer wall collected solar energy into what looked like paint pails. The pails of salt were sinks for collected solar energy. When fans pushed air past the open pails, the salts released their solar-generated warmth and the whole house was heated. When there was no air movement from the fans, the pails stored their solar energy. But after a few years, solar power to heat the house failed because pipes corroded, other mechanical parts failed, and all the elements of solar collection, storage and emission started to leak energy. The boy's father had enjoyed noting the temperature in the house and outside the house to prove how well the house worked. But heating the house didn't work anymore, and after about two and a half years, a conventional oil furnace was installed in 1953. The scientist, called the Sun Queen, was disenchanted when the family revealed to the press that the experiment had failed. But the boy continued living in the house until the 1970s. The house was eventually destroyed. But in 2023, the boy, now a man in his 70s, was interviewed for a documentary about the scientist. The boy retained his wonder at what had been possible, if only for a short time, in the early 1950s. He viewed solar energy as a natural resource. He had seen that the sun was a natural resource, which had miraculously heated his home for a few years so long ago. Another little boy lived in Wisconsin where the winters were harsher but similar. He never heard of solar energy until 1970 when his Wisconsin U.S. Senator Gaylord Nelson began Earth Day gatherings and celebrations. Solar energy, for residential use, became somewhat possible to people of average income in the 1990s. Solar energy came to be used on an industrial scale in the 20-teens. In the capital city of Wisconsin, by 2023, the local energy company had begun allowing residential energy users to designate a portion of their energy use to be powered by the energy company's solar panels, set up in a field next to the local airport. The sun was the last thing this man thought of when he thought of natural resources. He liked to fish and hunt and be alone in the wilderness. He lived in a rural area without great internet. He didn't want to be at a disadvantage compared to anyone, so he wanted some internet, enough to get by. A woman who was a scientist by training, like the scientist who had designed the solar house inhabited in the 1950s, lived in the capital of Wisconsin, a mid-sized city. She liked the outdoors. She ice skated in the winter. But with global warming, a winter outdoor sport like ice skating was confined to a few short days. In 2023, for a few days, a pond on the east side of the city was iced over enough to be skated on. She didn't hunt or fish. She relied on the good internet in her city because she worked from home. At work, she attended Zoom meetings. She dispatched her work to colleagues by internet. She longed to get off her computer and get outdoors. Because she didn't have a commute anymore, she did have more time to get outdoors in 2023. She considered clean air and clean water to be natural resources. She couldn't live without clean air or clean water. She wanted to be practical. When she saw she did not have clean air, she wanted to change that. She thought that by focusing on science, she could make a good case for solving the problem of air pollution in her neighborhood. She thought that by using the internet, she could publicize this solution to the problem of hyperlocalized air pollution from residential wood burning by her near neighbor. Her organization is Residents Against Wood Smoke Emission Particulates, rossipresidents.wordpress.com scroll down for PDFs of URLs of research and recent news. There are also RAWSE Presidents 10-minute videos on YouTube and TikTok and RAWSE Presidents 30-minute podcasts on Spotify and Podbean. PM2.5 is air pollution from wood burning. 
90% of wood burning emissions is PM2.5, particulate matter of 2.5 micrometer size. PM2.5 is the perfect size to infiltrate the human lung, causing a cascade of human health problems and early deaths. The episodes of RAWSE President's videos and podcasts cover news from around the world on PM2.5 air pollution from residential wood burning. Some problem solving is being done in the U.S., where for example one, wood burning beach fires are now banned in some parts of California, too. There are spare the air days especially in the western U.S., in Arizona, New Mexico, California, Oregon, Washington State, and Utah, where residential wood burning is banned for a few days at a time because of winter air inversions or wildfires 3. In Michigan, there will be no wood burning in some camping sites by 2024-4. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, is expected to lower safe limits for PM2.5 to 8 micrograms per meter cubed annually and 25 micrograms per meter cubed daily by 2024, after holding public hearings in February 2023. These PM2.5 safe limits will therefore be closer to the World Health Organization, WHO, annual standard of 5 micrograms per meter cubed. Some problem solving is being done in the United Kingdom, UK, where 5. The mayor of London has effectively banned wood stove use in new construction. This has been done because residential wood stove use by only 8% of residents causes 21% of PM2.5 pollution across the UK, surpassing the PM2.5 percentage generated by traffic. There has been 7. Some progress in the European Union, EU, where there is debate and voting on whether biomass, wood, burning should continue to receive billions of dollars of subsidies from the EU government. The reason for biomass subsidies is that it has recently been politically, but not scientifically, designated as carbon neutral. However, 8. Scientists around the world, most recently in letters from scientists in the UK, EU and US to their respective governments, protesting the use of the term carbon neutral for wood burning, have objected to the use of the term carbon neutral for wood burning. RAWSE presidents continually asserts the scientific fact that wood burning produces more PM2.5 than the fossil fuel coal burning, and wood burning produces 450 times the PM2.5 as the cleanest fossil fuel natural gas burning. Designating wood burning carbon neutral, and not counting wood burning as contributing to climate change allows many countries around the world to meet their paper, theoretical climate goals as written into the Paris Accord. Meeting climate goals on paper does not actually solve the problem of climate change if wood burning is not counted as producing emissions that contribute to climate change. 9. Japan recently began counting wood burning emissions at the stack when counting emissions contributing to climate change. But Japan discloses these with burning emission, PM2.5 counts as of April 2023, but does not have to include the wood burning PM2.5 count in the total emissions counted toward attaining Japan's climate goals. But Japan has made a step forward in this disclosure, starting in April 2023. Another way to disclose PM2.5 emission counts from wood burning is to 10. Use PM2.5 monitors. Since PM2.5 air pollution is hyperlocalized to areas close to the stack, PM2.5 monitors must be near to residential wood burning in order to count the PM2.5 that is emitted in a residential neighborhood. This problem is solved by putting PM2.5 monitors in the yards of near neighbors of residential wood burners if those neighbors have complained of air pollution from wood burning. Then this PM2.5 count can be disclosed by downloading historic data from even weekend and overnight wood burning without having to enter the homes of residential wood burners and not having to check the certification of residential wood stoves.